when when you lost the ring like did you look at that as a sign as oh maybe i shouldn't do this or were you just kind of more of like mad you know just like because i lost the ring like did you look at it as a sign maybe i was look yeah later but yeah. at the time, at the time, I was just like the devil. You know, we want to blame everybody else. You know, because when we're when we're young and when we're immature, we want to blame people for what what's happening, right? You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Yeah. We we like to blame people for what's happening. If you think about something that happened in your first marriage, right? Instead of taking accountability, sometimes we we tend to to place the blame elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did. I wanted to blame the devil for my ring being off my finger because there was there were certain things that I wanted. There were certain the desires that I wanted. I wanted to be married before I was 30. Yeah. I wanted somebody that was really good with my son because, you know, I just had my son at the time and he was he's autistic. And so I wanted somebody that I could trust with my son. And so, you know, even though there were red flags. What's up, Brave Arts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of A Scary to Mary, wanting you to love fearlessly. We have a special guest with us today. Today's guest is a mother. She's a dating after divorce coach through biblical counsel, faith, and love. I love all that. I seen her content. We followed each other on Instagram and I was like, yeah, I got to have her on the show. Today, we're going to discuss resilience and romance, dating after divorce, Brave Hearts community. Let's show some love to Felicia Renee. How are you doing this evening? Hello, everyone. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. So happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Anytime, anytime. Yeah, I love the content. So, of course, I only bring the best on this scary to be married. And I want to talk to you about this resilience and romance and dating after divorce. Now, the Brave Arts community know to my subscribers, they know that I didn't date as long. Right. You know, I going through this whole divorce process. So I feel like you can really help us in this uh, process with dating. What makes someone not give up on love after divorce? You just have to keep trying. You you cannot give in to the fear. You cannot give in to the fear because that's a, that's the first thing that comes up. It's it's being afraid of going through what you just came out of. It's the fear of going through the whole process of divorce because divorce is a process. It's not only, you know, the initial thing that's happening. It is a whole process. You go through the grief, you go through the anger, you go through the, you know, the separation anxiety. I know we experience things a little bit different. You know, it, it's a case by case scenario. We're, we're not all the same. We're all built a little bit different, but it's just that, that initial fear of what if this happens again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Fear is real, right? I mean, a lot of times people try to dance around it. No, I'm good. Well, especially for men, right? No, I'm good. You're not good. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. I mean, it's it's really like a spirit. I, I'm a, I'm listen. God, listen. If your listeners are believers, okay, like you know, the word says that fear is not of God. I believe that that is a real spirit that will come after you and will come for you in any situation. So it's a real thing that you have to fight. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 like the giant. It's it's like Goliath. You really have to fight that. Mm -hmm. And you just have to go for it. Yeah. I've got some experience. I got <laughs> some experience, you know. I I know you might not, but I, I do. <laughs> Yeah, I mean the the fear is real. I I remember meeting my wife because you know, of course, I'm remarried, and I remember just talking to her on the phone because we dated long distance, and I'm just thinking like, this woman is amazing, but like you said, that other side is fear. Like thinking of all these other things because I've been through a divorce, and you thinking of all the things that could happen, right? You're trying to put yourself in this protection mode. 
And if I lived in fear, I never would have remarried because are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really, really good. Or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram Reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video. And it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. I wouldn't have had the confidence or the confidence, right? To move yeah. forward and knowing that she's a totally different woman than my ex. And that's no shade to her. Right. But she's a different woman. So I don't want to have to bring that baggage into this new situation, even though there were some things that I need to work through and thank God for deliverance. But I'm grateful that I didn't live in that fear. Right. And you know what? Um, I really believe that for me, I knew even though I was going through the divorce, even though I went through the divorce, even though I experienced all of the stuff that comes through that process. Right. I still knew that just because I was getting divorced, I was still a wife. I was still a wife. I was cre created to be a wife. I was created to be somebody's son's <laughs> wife. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even if, you know, what I was just in didn't work out. I knew that I was created to be a wife. It didn't take away. The divorce didn't take away who God created me to be. Mm -hmm. And that is really, you know, what God has called me to do is to take people. Really, I'm, I'm listen. I'm sure you work a lot with men. I work a lot with women because I'm a woman. My job and what God has called me to do is to take women and say, hey, yes, I'm the dating after divorce coach. But that number one thing we're going to do is take that pain and, and show you, make the scales fall from your eyes, right? And show you that you can take that pain and be pushed into your purpose, as you start to walk into your purpose, as 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 you start to do exactly what God has called you to do, then you will be ready. You will be healed and you will be ready to start dating and you will know what you don't want, what you don't like and what to look for mm -hmm. in your purpose partner. Mm -hmm. That's important because mm -hmm. everybody ain't for you. <laughs> right. That's right. You can say that again. I, I, because I, as I hear you talk, you said that you that you are a wife, and even though going through the divorce process, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, we're not really hearing that a lot in today's culture, especially with our younger demographic. Now, for the most most of my subscribers, they're between 35 and 44, and they're predominantly men, right? Mm -hmm. So I deal with a lot of men, but help even for my men listeners, how do you stay in the mindset that I'm still a wife, even though you've gone through a divorce? Like, how do you, where does that mindset come from? I mean, cause I think it's a wonderful thing, but sometimes when you get divorced, people are just like, I'm through with that marriage stuff, or, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a wife anymore. Like, how do you keep that mindset? Okay. So I don't know if you remember this and I don't know if you went through it the same way. Maybe we can talk this out. Mm -hmm. But when I was going through my divorce, one of the things that I had to identify was who I was. 
I had to figure that out all over again because there were a lot of things that God had been speaking to me that I was even moving in and walking in before my marriage. And when I got married, you know, I took, the, you know, I'm, I'm the help me. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to help him build and develop what he's doing with his nonprofit, with, you know, his events and with this and with that, you know. And so everything that I was doing got put on the back burner. And so during the divorce, I had to really say, OK, God, did 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 I do I like this because I like this or do I like it because he liked it? You know, you have to go through that process of elimination. And I came to that place to where it was like I was getting to learn myself all over again. Identity. You get to know yourself. You have to learn who you are because believe it or not, you're not the same person that you were before you came into the marriage. You're not that same person. You are totally different. So you have to take the time out to get to know you again. And as I started to get to know who I was in God, and he was reminding me, this is what I created. I went all the way back to Genesis, right? When he created Adam, when he created Eve and just all of the things, right? Mm -hmm. And he showed me when I created you, I created you to be a wife, just like I took Eve and created Eve out of Adam mm -hmm. from his rib. I did the same for you. This is a this is something that a lot of people don't know about me. Be, when I got engaged the night when I got home, I, I prayed to God. I said, okay, God, is this what you want for me? Right? Went to sleep. I was happy, you know, engaged in front of 300 plus. And I asked God, is this what you want for me? And we had been dating for a while, known him 14 years before we married. Mm -hmm. And I woke up the next morning, the ring was off my finger. What did I do? Blame the devil. The devil. Where's my ring at? I was hopping all over that bed. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Looking on the floor, under the bed, everything. Not remembering that I asked God, is this what you want? God will give you the desires of your heart. <laughs> wow. God will give us the desires of our heart. But his will for us should always be our desire. And at that time, honestly, that was not my desire. But that did that take away from the fact that God created me to be a wife? No, mm -hmm. he doesn't waste anything. So even that situation, even your situation, he used it to create in you a better man, the man that God had always called you and created you to be, the husband that God always called you and created you to be. Mm -hmm. And in me, in that situation, he did not waste it. Mm -hmm. He called me to be a wife. Mm -hmm. And so he just, I had to go through a process and it's made me a better woman for it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I hope I answered your question. I hope y'all getting something out there. Oh yeah, for sure. I because I, as I <laughs> as I listen, I'm thinking when when you lost the ring, like did you look at that as a sign as oh maybe I shouldn't do this, or were you just kind of more of like mad, you know, just like because I lost the ring? Like did you look at it as a sign, maybe? I was look yeah later. But yeah. <laughs> at the time, at the time, I was just like the devil, you know, we want to blame everybody else, you know, because when we're when we're young and when we're immature, we want to blame people for what what's happening. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Yeah. We we yeah. like to blame people for what's happening. If you think about something that happened in your first marriage. Right. Mm -hmm. Instead of taking accountability, sometimes we we tend to to place the blame elsewhere mm -hmm. and so that's what I did I wanted to blame the devil for my ring being off my finger because there was there were certain things that I wanted there were certain the desires that I wanted I wanted to be married before I was 30 yeah I wanted somebody that was really good with my son because you know I just had my son at the time and he was he's autistic and so I wanted somebody that I could trust with my son and so you know even though there were red flags it was almost like I, I wrote a pass for it mm -hmm. because it was just like you know well 
we got this check, we got this check, you know, maybe he doesn't treat me so good or he doesn't talk to me so well sometimes, but he's good to my son. I can trust him with my baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, no, that's real. I get it because the red flags, I mean, sometimes we think we can fix people. Sometimes we think we can love people through those flags. You know, sometimes we just simply ignore them. So yeah, um, I understand. I, I want to talk to you about autism because uh, the Brave Hearts community know I have two kids with autism. Um, the two kids that my wife and I have together, um, they're uh, four and five years old. Does having a child with autism, does that make dating a little more difficult? Or is that more of a, is, is it a, a hard conversation to have with someone or just, you know, like, is it an extra layer of uh, making dating harder, having, a, you know, a child with autism? Because they, they do have certain challenges that everyone can't uh, adjust to. Absolutely. I think that's like a, a, a dual answer, really, mm -hmm. um, because. As I grew, as I, you know, grew older and more mature. Um, and I think even when I was I was younger, it was always very important that I was dating someone that would be good with my son, that I could trust with my son, because my son is nonverbal. He's 15 years old, he's nonverbal. And so, you know, I know my son, we have you know, such a connection that if anything was wrong, if anything, you know, happened to him, if he was in distress, I would know, but he would not be able to open his mouth and tell me, mom, this happened mm -hmm. to me. You know, he wouldn't be able to verbalize that. So yes, it definitely has, you know, there. It, it's kind of twofold because Zion, that's what my son's name is, Zion. Mm -hmm. He knows good people. He knows good people. He will, you know, come and, and touch your face and lay his hand on your face. And, you know, he, you know, if he saw you in your beard, he will come and, and touch your beard. He likes that. And so he knows good people. But when it's something a little iffy about you, he, he going to stay in his own little world. And so absolutely having a child with with autism has definitely like my radar is up a little bit more. Yeah. You know, I think that then, you know, a regular parent, I don't bring child, uh, you know, my children around, um, you know, anybody that I'm dating unless I know that it's serious, mm -hmm. you know, or it's 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 going to be, you know, more than just, you know, a date or two mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because Routine is really important for children with autism, really, really important. So if they get used to being around a man or being around a person, you know, that's going to be really hard. You know, my, my ex-husband was really, really good with my son, really, really good. And like I said, that that sold me. That one thing sold me. Yeah. And, um, you know, even after the divorce, you know, me and my ex-husband had had a daughter together. We have a daughter together. And even after the, the divorce, probably about a year um, after the divorce, he was he was pretty consistent still in his life, you know, getting him like once a, a, a week. Mm -hmm. um, and then it just stopped completely. Now, I can't say, you know, exactly why, you know, he did move on. He does. You know, he did get remarried and everything like that. Um, but it stopped. And when it stopped, I saw a drastic change in my son um, because his father was never really, you know, um, really there a lot. You know, he was kind of in and out. He still, you know, is he has his moments. Mm -hmm. But that took a toll on my son, Yeah, you know, to the point where he wouldn't even go outside when he would come in. And when when my ex-husband would come and get my daughter, um, he wouldn't go around. He wouldn't want to talk to him, you know, and this probably went on for about a year or so, you know, that that he was uh, kind of like, 
you left me. You know, that's kind of what it seemed like. Like yeah. you left me. You yeah. you 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 didn't deal with me no more. And so now I don't want to deal with you. You know, now he he'll he has adjusted. He's adjusted to him not being around. It's been seven years though. So it it was a it took a while. Yeah. It did take a while. So yes, if I, I hope I answered your question. It it definitely um it definitely I think it helps, honestly, because I'm just not just gonna just jump into anything, mm -hmm. right? You yeah. know, when you have a, a child who's special needs, mm -hmm. and then too, there has been, you know, times where men have been a little iffy about it because it's just like he he doesn't talk yeah. you know because you you know as a man just think about the things that you would think of coming into a relationship you know with a woman who has a special needs child that is nonverbal. You know, that has other outside parents that would be involved and, yeah. you know, all the drama that can come from there, all the drama that you could think of in your mind that mm -hmm. could come from that. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That's real. I No, I, 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 I totally agree with you uh, because my four year old, he's he's just like starting to talk. Mm hmm. Um. And, you know, we got him in, in speech therapy and stuff like that. And it's a process. You know, my five-year-old, he's he's doing well. Mm -hmm. It's just the every day, like you said, needing to be consistent. There's just so many different things that, that comes with uh, having a special needs child. And that person, whoever decides to be a part of your life, they have to, especially if they're not aware of those things that go on within your son. Yeah. Um, you have to be patient and you have to be loving. And I do believe that kids with autism, like they know they, I believe they spirit be on point. Like they can figure, they can look Period. at somebody or, you know, so I, so I get it. So when you talk I'm about. I'm going to tell you like, when my son do something like this. Yeah. Aside, mm -hmm. I'll be like, okay. Yeah. Let me let me watch them. Let me let me make sure make sure everything's up and up with them because he just gave you a side eye. <laughs> I'll tell you something else. If we go out and eat something and my son don't eat something, mm. I ain't eating it. Mm. <laughs> I will not eat it. Yeah. Hmm. That's a new one. That's interesting. Pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> I, I need to step my game up then. Thanks for the for, for the nugget because I, I didn't think about that. That's good. I I wanted because I was looking at some of your Instagram stories and your reels, and you talked about the the video with the wedding dress on. Right. I, I thought that was really good. So for those who haven't seen it, make sure that you go follow Felicia's page. And I'll ask uh, for your information at the end so that way everyone can get in touch with you. You said uh, somebody is going to show you why all the heartbreak and pain was necessary and you will see why it will be all worth it uh, sometime soon. You said you will see why it all had to happen the way it did. God will forever get forever get the glory, period. Then you say these three things. And, and I kind of want you to go in depth about these a little bit. You said yeah. ask God to replace the date of that bad memory and make it like it never happened. <laughs> Yes, yes. So, you know, when when God sends that perfect person for you, I mean, we're we're not none of us are perfect, but there is somebody that is perfect for you. There's mm -hmm. somebody that is made for you. Um, when he sends that person, you are going to realize that you had to experience that those bad relationships, mm -hmm. those bad situationships. Mm -hmm. So that you would be able to appreciate this man or this woman that God saved just for you. And when I talk about asking God to replace a date. So my divorce was December, December 15th, 2017. Okay. Um, God had, God had, had spoken to me concerning, you know, starting an online show 
um, gave me the name. And I'm just like, God, like I, at this point, I had already been served my divorce papers. Um, you know, I, I was going through the process at the moment. And I was like, people are going to think I'm crazy. You know, he gave me the name and the name was really similar to uh, something, uh, an album that my ex-husband had dropped. And I was just like, people are going to think that I am nuts. Okay. December 15th, the date that the, the judge signed the divorce papers. I never signed anything. God told me to stand. I never signed anything. But at that, that date, she signed the divorce papers and, you know, it was done. Mm -hmm. It was over that day. Um, I remember watching something. It was a woman of God and and she was just talking about how, you know, her mother had died on, they found she had passed away on Christmas, I think. And, you know, she asked God to replace this date for her. And, you know, God started to do lots of things like good things on this date to replace. So I, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try this. I am going to try this. I was like, God, I need you to replace this day because I cannot be depressed and sad every December. Like it's not just for one day. It's leading up to it. You got all the holidays. You got Thanksgiving. You got all the good food. I can't eat. Like I want to be able to eat. I want to eat some cake. I want to eat some cookies. I like sweets. So I want to be able to eat you know, when it's time to eat and be merry and have fun with my family. Mm -hmm. And so I asked God to replace that date for me. Well, God did that for me. The December 16th, um, 2019, I graduated from AIT. I went to the army at 33. Um, another thing that God told me to do, I would have never thought that I would have entered into the army at age 33. Um, but I did. Yeah. Went to the army age 33, turned 34 on the gun range, had never shot a gun, held a gun, been around a gun ever in my life until I got to Fort Jackson, uh, South Carolina, if y'all know. Um, and I graduated AIT. I got through that. I was away from my children for the first time ever for four months, went through basic training, went through AIT, and I graduated AIT December 16th. God changed that date for me. That's how he did it for me. Mm -hmm. And for those who don't know, can you tell everyone exactly what is AIT? AIT is an advanced individual training. It's a it's a schooling that you go to after basic training. Mm -hmm. I was in the Army, Army Reserves for almost four years. And um, yeah, I was a 56 Mike. And what a 56 Mike is, is a religious affairs specialist. Mm -hmm. All right. That's what's up. <laughs> I, did, I did not know that. That's beautiful. I, I want to talk about the second the second one when you said these three things the second one was ask god to give you clarity and peace that surpasses all understanding because baby that apology or conversation may never happen <laughs> Can you please it might that? not ever happen mm. it might not ever happen you know you might not get an apology for what somebody did to you you might not get an apology for something that hurt you and upset you but what you can do is ask God to help you. And what you can do is, is give that forgiveness that you're holding, because a lot of us hold on to unforgiveness, right? You got to give that to God and say, okay, God, I don't know what to do this, with this. I, I need to give this back to you and I need you to help me. I need you to help me because that conversation might not ever happen, especially like, my ex-husband, mm -hmm. he was remarried six months after our divorce. Yeah. yeah. So for me, yeah. like, I was still going through. Like, I was still going through. Um, you know, and, and for this to happen, um, you know, great for him. But for me, I was still, you know, healing. I was still going through. And so I had to forgive this man, even though it hurt me, even though I was hurt. And even though I hadn't moved on, I still had to forgive him. 
that was still, you know, somebody that I, I was in love with, that was still someone that I share a child with. I had to forgive him mm. because, you know, and even, you know, the conversation that I would have loved to have had with him never happened. But I had to seek that solace in God and ask him to, to give me the peace that I needed to be OK with the way that things are. Mm. That's powerful because I'm glad that you said that, because when I read this. I thought about the time when my father was passing. Uh, he had a stroke, so he couldn't talk. And he was like in and out of our lives. Whole, that's a show within itself. I did a video on it. I'll probably put it in the description or something. I don't know. But I remember getting a or trying to just have a conversation, just telling him how I felt or whatever. And it hit me at the time that you're not going to get what you're looking for. Cause he can't talk. He's, he's here, but he can't talk. And I had to make peace with that. So I'm glad that you brought that up because I could have easily held everything that happened in my childhood against him and could have wanted an apology. And he, you know, can't say a word to me. And I could have just held on to that bitterness or resentment or that anger or just having these questions. And I had to learn that I, I have to be okay with that. So I'm glad that you brought that up. But here, seeing that, it brought back memories. I was like, I have to talk to you about this. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? You still got to release. You got to release by being able to tell him how you felt. And, you know, sometimes we don't know that we need it. it I had a release with my ex-husband before. I mean, honestly, I'm not even going to lie, because one thing that I do is I am very transparent about my process, mm -hmm. very transparent. There was a time when, you know, there there was something that happened. I, I used to be really, really um, passive about certain things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I got the wrong idea about what being about what being uh, a submissive mm -hmm. <laughs> was, mm -hmm. right? I yeah. got the, I, I had the wrong idea. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it I, I just felt like I had to sit down and shut up, you know? Well, you know, after uh, seeking the, the wisdom and the knowledge for myself, you know, um, from the good word, right? Um, I realized, you know, I was going through deliverance. God was taking me through that thing hand in hand. It was me and him. You know, he was covering me and and I didn't need nobody to lay hands on me, uh, throw uh, oil or uh, holy water on me to do it. God did that thing. OK. And he covered me, meaning that he didn't allow it to be public. Right. It was me and him. Well, as I was going through my deliverance, there was something that was happened that happened. It was something that was said, you know, from my ex. And, you know, we were exchanging our daughter. You know, he had her for the weekend. And what he said to me triggered something in me. And I literally said everything I ever wanted to say to him in that moment. Now, when those things happen, you have to really think. You have to take into consideration like, OK, uh, I might have just messed up. I might have need I, after this, I probably need to go ask for, you know, God, please forgive me. Repent. You know what I'm saying? Because there was some choice words that came out of my mouth. And of course, you know, when you love God, the first thing that that someone wants to, to throw in your face is, oh, I thought you was a godly man. I thought yeah. you was a godly woman. And this is how you talk. And I said, baby. If this is the way that God is processing this thing out of me, he going to use it. He going to turn it around and he going to use it for my good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. even when you release it, it does something. It is a piece of, of healing for you. Even if they don't say, they don't apologize, you know, for hurting you or for not being there or for not being who you felt like they should have been you still release something. It was still a piece of your healing. It was still a piece of your puzzle that you needed. Mm -hmm. That's good.
The last one you said was ask God to show you you. Ha, yes. <laughs> ask God to show you you because baby, you're not perfect. Mm -hmm. You are not perfect. Mm -hmm. You're not. We're not perfect. You know, and 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 you know, in, in a time of healing, what you do is you're looking at everything that hurt you. You're you're going back and you know you're playing this thing like a, a cinematic thing in in your mind about all the scenarios, all the situations, what was said, what was done to you. But you're not looking at yourself and 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 paying attention to the way that you played a part in any of it. Mm -hmm. When you get to that part, you you know you you God taking you to another level. Yep. You looking at yourself in the mirror. You're no longer looking at the speck in somebody else's eye, mm -hmm. but you're looking at that plank in your eye. And that right there is going to make you a better husband, a better wife. Mm -hmm. That's good. I like that because I, I remember one time my wife and I, we fell out, got into a disagreement. And uh, I told her, I said, you know, I will disappoint you. And I wasn't saying that as if being like negative or it's just the it's it's the truth. I mean, we're just two beautifully broken people trying to please God. Right. Right. So I was like, you could you could take me off that pedestal. You know, you, yeah. because I'm I'm I will mess up uh, and I'll try my best to walk in integrity at all costs. I'm just flawed. You know, I'm yes. sinner saved by grace. Right. Um, so I think when we understand that. Um, I believe that we can. Show grace. Absolutely. And, and Absolutely. that's that. Yeah, and that's not a pass just to let people do what they want to because a lot of times people take extremes. Uh, I post I post on Twitter, I think it was today, I was saying it's amazing how many people want a finished product. But you're not a finished product. Everybody, you can't have this, you can't have that. You, you, they just, all these things. And I'm like, what about you though? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so. yeah, what what you gonna do? How you know, yeah. and, and and that's really good, you know. Take what you said, take me off of that pedestal. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you one thing, and you may have never thought about this like this ever in your life, but when you put somebody on a pedestal, God will show you every time you will be disappointed every time you will be hurt every time you'll be almost in in the corner blowing bubbles if you know what I mean every time because what he's showing you is like you got to take them off the pedestal because the only one that's supposed to be number one in your life the only one that you're supposed to look up into the hills from which cometh your help is me you're supposed to be looking at me and so even if you're supposed to be with that person and y'all ain't tied the knot y'all ain't never you know did what whatever it is mm -hmm. you're going to get disappointed every time until you put them into a rightful place until you get a, into a place on your knees where you're going to God and saying look I didn't get it right this time. I did something wrong. I took my eyes off of you. Mm -hmm. I placed this person above you. And now I, I need I need to be humbled again because you're going to get humbled every single time. Mm -hmm. Every time. I've been there. I'm not <laughs> telling you nothing I don't know about. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. I, you know, I, I always think of uh, Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great ball. All the king horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again, right? And I, I know this is well, not rhyme stuff, but I think about it. I'm like, you will have a great fall, and only God can put you back together because you trying it. to put somebody else back together, you're going to be sadly mistaken. You're going to find out like, I can't do this. It's yes. too much, and there's some things you just really have to. There's some things that you can do. 
But then there's other things that just take supernatural power. And you know, like if it wasn't for the grace of God, this wouldn't have happened. You knew exactly. it was bigger than you. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, how do you feel about hopeless romantics? Oh my gosh, I'm such a hopeless romantic. So I love us. <laughs> I love us. Oh my God. And the only reason why I ask that is because being in love is a beautiful thing. Finding that person is a beautiful thing. It's just the work that it takes, though. My old mentor, he told me one time, he said, Sean, great marriages aren't found, but they're built. Yeah. And there will there will be seasons of testing. And are you willing to go through that to get to that beautiful place that that you see on TV or what you imagined in your head? And it's going to take work. And I believe you can get there. It's just a matter of are you willing to uh, make more deposits than withdrawals in your relationship? Ooh. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, like I said, I, I I absolutely love us. I have always been a hopeless romantic. Um, you know, I I must every time I fall down, I'm gonna get back up. Like the resilience is definitely there. It's in me. Like hey, I'm going to jump back into shape. <laughs> I'm going to get back up and I'm going to try, try, try again. Like that little train that kept on chugging, keep, you know, chugga, 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 chugga. I'm going to keep on chugging because, um, you know, I, first of all, I, I know my worth. I know, you know, the woman that God has created me to be. And I know that when he created the earth, when he created Adam and Eve, he called them good. You don't think he said the same thing about you and me? He called us good. And so I read, when I read the songs of songs and when I read <laughs> Esther and when I read Ruth and just all of the, the love stories of the Bible, I am, it gives me hope. Mm -hmm. It gives me hope, mm -hmm. you know? And so just for everybody out there that is in this place, right? Keep on hoping, keep on loving. Keep on giving everything you got. Mm -hmm. If God gives you another chance at love, take it. Take it. Why not? I agree. I, I totally agree. Because some people, they go through a divorce and they're done. They're done. They I will never open up. And even if they do get in get back into a relationship, it's it's like a shell of them. You never yeah. really get the the authentic, vulnerable person. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, especially those that have, you know, have been married for a long time. I, you know, I was only married for about, um, it was less than three years. And so, you know, not saying that being married for a shorter amount of time than somebody is easier because, you know, I, I would like to argue that it's not, you know, anybody who's gone through it, but, you know, those who have been married, you know, five, 10, 15, you know, 20 years, like they spent half of their lives with, with somebody, you know, with one person. Yeah. And so, you know, it can definitely be scary to remarry, you know, <laughs> it definitely yeah. can. And, and yeah. that's why I'm an advocate. I'm, I'm a biblical cognitive behavioral therapist. I'm an advocate of therapy, people going to therapy. I, that is the reason why I became a therapist is because I sought out therapy. I was going to therapy while I was in my marriage. You know, I kind of stepped back for a little bit because my ex-husband did not want to do it. He refused to go to therapy with me. So I was like, why am I doing it? You know, if I'm gonna do it by myself. But when I was going through the divorce, I knew that I needed therapy. I needed help. You know, I needed a, somebody that that loved God, that knew, you know, my values and, you know, the principles that I follow. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that if if anybody feels that they don't want to do it, they don't want to do this again, they don't want to do this ago. I feel like that, you know, maybe you should you should seek out therapy and and figure out what that is. Mm -hmm. Figure out that the why. Why are you saying that? Why do you feel that way? Mm -hmm. Talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
yeah, therapy definitely helped my marriage. Um, my wife, she has her individual therapist. I have my individual therapist and well, I have a I have a new therapist now. And we have a marriage therapist we see together. So that's awesome. A lot of therapy going on in this camp. So <laughs> you know Yeah, but, setting yourself up for success. It takes work. Oh it's, yeah. It's interesting to see how many people aren't willing to do the work, uh, and even financially, even investing in your marriage. And I'm not talking about a a, a a new wallet or a new purse or new Jordans. I'm not talking about I'm talking about conferences, uh books, all those different things, um, courses. I mean, my wife and I, we read a book uh together once a week mm -hmm. just to keep us locked in. You know? That's awesome. That is amazing. Yeah. It's a uh, matter of fact, we did a, a YouTube video. It's called uh, Books with Bay. Uh <laughs> shameless plug, but we uh I'll I'll link it up in the description or something. But it's just us re re reading books together and it's 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 pretty cool. I want to jump into the bonus round. This is Felicia Uncut. This is <laughs> It's whatever comes to mind, there's no wrong answer. So let's <laughs> jump into this as we get closer to closing the show. What is the biggest mistake you see women make in relationships? The biggest mistake that I see women make in relationships. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's just the second guessing, spending too much time on somebody that keeps on showing you who they are. Mm -hmm. Over and over and over and over again. And you keep giving them chances. You keep on holding out. Like you said, just ignoring the red flags, you know, thinking that you're going to be able to, you know, change somebody. We are adults. People will show you who they are. Believe them. Yeah. I agree. I always use the I use Macy salesperson. I always say people put on their Macy salesperson when you first meet them, you know? It's yeah, no best good, foot forward. Good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Colgate a, smile. A, a, yeah, right? Smell good. I mean, everything is perfect, you know, and then you give it a couple months and you'll see. Um, shoot, by today's standards, I, I would say a couple of weeks, all you got to do is check their social media profile. Really? Let, let me say this real quick. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell y'all what I've done. So what I did is I is I started to, you know, include God in everything, like everything. And so there was a simple prayer that I started to pray when I was dating um, somebody. And, you know, I, I would get to know him. You know, sometimes you, you get a little lonely. You want to just talk to somebody, text somebody or whatever, try to get to know him. And so I stopped saying the prayer like right away. I was like, let me just talk to him about two weeks to see, you know, well, this simple prayer and it's, you could use it for, you could change it for a man or for a woman. But I said, God, if this person is not for me, if this man is not for me, men, if this woman is not for me, let it fall to the ground. Mm -hmm. When I tell you within 24 hours or less, they would do or they would say something. And I'm like, nope, I'm out of here. This is not God. Now, I don't want to give anybody the wrong like idea about anything. Because just like you said, relationships take work. You have like, people are not perfect. There Sometimes we encounter the right person at the wrong time. You have to be able to discern that for yourself. And don't let nobody else tell you because if you if you confide in your friends or your family, they mean well, but they may not have the discernment that God has given you. They may not have heard what God has told you concerning this person, you know, being a part of your life. So use discernment. Love it. From seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? Woo! <laughs> that could be a whole show. You hear me? My parents were never married. Okay. My parents were never married. Um, they were together for almost 30 years. Never mm -hmm. married. Mm -hmm. They were engaged um, at, 
at certain times. I don't know if the engage ever broke up. I don't know really what happened, but they were never married. Um, so of course, you know, one of my main goals was I'm, I'm going to get married. I'm going to do it right. I'm not going to shack up. I'm not going to do what my parents did. I hear you. Who makes a better spouse? Someone never married or someone divorced? A man or, uh, or a woman of God. <laughs> <laughs> a man or a woman of God. A, a fully surrendered, committed man or woman of God. It doesn't, you know, I, I do feel like, you know, those of us who have been married, we've gone through we've gone through some stuff with, with people, but even those who haven't been married have gone through some stuff with people, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I can't really put it on one or the other. <laughs> yeah. That's all good. There's no wrong answer. <laughs> okay. This is a multiple choice. So you just tell me okay. what you want to work for you. What's, okay. hard, what's harder for you to say? A, I apologize. B, I need help. C, I love you, or D, I was wrong. I need help. And I need I, help. May I ask why? Um, I, I, you know what? I, I think because I, I strive to do things by myself a lot. I feel comfortable. You know, you know, some people feel they're they're comfortable in group settings and out. I'm just like, you know, me and God, I got this. Like, I'm, I'm going to get it. I'm going to figure it out. You know, that's why I was trying to build a website and I have no technical skills at all. But I was trying to do that thing for about six months, y'all. For about six months by myself. I was, you know, I'm starting um, a, a podcast called Unscripted. Shameless plug. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> But um, I'm starting a podcast. And so I was in the studio recording and there was an old friend, you know, a guy that I knew from from my childhood. And, you know, he was peeping through. I had my daughter in there with me. And, you know, he asked me what I was doing. I told him and, you know, he was like, well, you know, this is what I do, you know, so if you need help, you know, and I'm I'm just like, you know, at this point, I had my hand on my head. I'm just like, he was like, well, you know, this is what I do. So if you need help, just, you know, let me know. He's like, well, you know, what's the problem? And then he was like, do you not like asking for help? And I was like, no. Then I was like, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. I just don't want, I just don't want to. And then plus I like, I like myself. I do. I like hanging out with myself. I don't know if y'all like that, but I'm like that. And <laughs> now that's a beautiful thing. I get it. Last question. Is it easier to love yourself or someone else? Mm, I think, I mean, I, I could do both pretty well. I just told you I love myself. Like, I like myself. I like spending time with me. Mm -hmm. But I also like spending time with the ones I love. Mm -hmm. That that gives me joy. So mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't say one or the other. I like more. But I, I like them both. I think just as much as the other. Mm -hmm. all right well I, I have one more i know i said this was the last question but i have one more now that we hear at what okay. point in your life did you fall in love with yourself was there a, a isolated incident like was there something that flicked the light on for you that you said from this day forward <clears throat> i'm gonna choose myself Oh, gosh. Wow. I think there's been so many different times because, you know, we evolve, right? Mm -hmm. Like over the years. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's been so many different times that, you know, I've fallen in love with myself, uh, you know, whether it was, you know, um, in high school growing up and, you know, I lost my hair and, you know, I was supposed to be in a pageant I still went on to being in that pageant with no hair baby and I won fell in love with myself or you know it could have been you know the time where somebody broke my heart and I was down for about two weeks but then I looked at myself in the mirror and was like girl you deserve better anyways fell in love with myself and so you know just those times and those you know those moments of evolving I have a daughter so she's looking at me every day, 
You know, I have a son too, you know, but it's a little different. He's he's not worried about me like that. You know how guys are. But my daughter is looking at me every day. Yeah. Gotta love myself because she's going through some things a little bit younger. She's seven years old that I never dealt with until I was a teenager or older. And I'm just like, you're seven. Why are you going through this? Yeah. Gotta love myself every day. Yeah. Because she's looking at me. Mm. I love it. This has been a, a phenomenal episode. I want to acknowledge you, Felicia, for uh, your boldness um, with your faith in God. Uh, I, I love it. Uh, as a believer myself, I, I think we need to hear that more often. We need to hear the word more often. We need to be more relatable. Uh, I want to acknowledge you for uh, continuing to love again despite going through a divorce, because as as we discussed earlier, there's people who they just throw it away. Uh, and I want to acknowledge you for being a, a single mom and, and raising a son with autism because it can be challenging. So I want to acknowledge you for those things. Uh, thanks again for being a guest. Let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. Give us all your information. I'll have everything mm-hmm. linked up in the description. Absolutely. I've just launched my my website. I finally asked for help, y'all. Finally <laughs> asked for help. Just you love launched yourself. my because <laughs> I love myself. <laughs> but yes, I just add, I just got my new website up and running. It's www.felicia Renee P H Y L I C I A R E N A Y E dot com. Felicia Renee dot com. Email. Uh, www.datingafterdivorcecoach. dot at gmail. dot com. Um, Instagram dating. dot after. dot divorce. dot coach. Mm-hmm. Follow me on Instagram and uh, dating after divorce coach on Facebook. What else I got? I got LinkedIn. Felicia Renee. Y'all gonna find me. Y'all gonna find me. Where wherever you go, you gonna find me. I'm there. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Brave Hearts community, you heard it here. Make sure you connect with Felicia. I pr- appreciate you taking some time out of your day to be a guest on today's episode. Brave Hearts community, you heard it here. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button. If you're watching this via YouTube, make sure that you share this video with a friend. You never know what someone is going through. Um, someone can be going through a divorce, heartbreak. Maybe there was something that was said on this episode that can help someone. So please share this video. If you are listening to this via podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review. By doing so, it puts you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free stuff? So make sure you leave that rating and review. Thanks once again, everyone, for listening and watching. And we are out. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of It's Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarry, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here. But anyway, go watch another video.